people outside the Hollow Knight community sometimes call us obsessed with the game. If you're one of those people, let me make something clear. I'm perfectly capable of playing games other than Hollow Knight and enjoying them. But if I want to mod those games to be Hollow Knight themed so they're more enjoyable for me, it doesn't mean I have a problem. So I tried out numerous Hollow Knight mods for other games and compiled them into a top 10 list. The ranking is all my opinion based upon how polished they are, the fun factor, as well as creativity. Some of these mods really surprised me. With that said, let's get into the video. Coming in at number 11 is actually a secret game inside Hollow Knight. To play, enter the Spirit's Glade and jump to the top left corner. Now turn to the left, turn to the right, and close your eyes imagining a grub in excruciating pain and dream nail the statue. That's right, it's Raid Shadow Legends, also playable on Android and iOS. The sponsor of this video, Raid, is a game with global PvP, over 600 champions, and massive PvE boss battles. One of these is Malik Kavar, the boss of the Void Keep, previously a light priest and still salty to this day about his banishment. Mechanically, Malik is all about poison. To beat him, you can use block debuff along with increased buff duration to prevent the poison, remove debuff to get rid of it, or heals and shields to mitigate the damage. This month, Raid has a fresh rotation of the Hydra boss with new events and tournaments daily, including Valentine's Day events featuring a brand new legendary champion. There's no better time than now to get started. If you're a new player, use my link in the description or scan this QR code within 30 days to get Rector Draft, a free epic champion along with 200,000 silver, an energy refill, XP boost, and an ancient shard. All the loot will be waiting for you here. Now, let's get started on the top 10. At number 10 is the Pale King mod for Civilization V. I would have never expected a Civilization mod to end up on this list, but here we are. This mod adds the Pale King as a playable character, and along with the novelty of having cities based upon Hollow Knight areas, comes with a unique effect, unit, and building. The Civilization's unique effect is to create infection, also known as fallout, whenever your units die or kill an enemy. Your military units can scrub that fallout to increase their power at the cost of taking damage. The Pale King's unique unit is the Vessel. It's definitely interesting, but it feels a bit underpowered. It has less strength than the unit it replaces, but if you scrub five fallout tiles, it becomes the Pure Vessel. I can only assume that Pure Vessels are extremely powerful because they're a huge pain to acquire. The unique building is the Stag Station, which allows you to airlift units between cities. I really like the concept of it, but I didn't get to build it because after my army of vessels failed to even capture the nearby city-state, I promptly rage quit the game. At number 9 is a Hollow Knight mod for Rimworld. The mod adds vessels as a playable race and faction, along with stags as pack animal pets. Rimworld is a game I played a lot in the past but haven't revisited for years, so I barely remember how to play the game. But I knew enough to get a game started, situating myself perfectly between the Vessel Factions, City of Queens, Kingdom's Cliffs, and Dirt Nests, and began my game. I equipped my guns and loaded as much medicine and food as I could onto my stag, and headed to Kingdom's Cliffs. Just a few hours later, and we were staging an attack on the soon-to-be extinct Tribe of Vessels. It was the perfect plan. Hornet and the Knight would attack from a distance, while the God Gamer would cover their flanks. At number 8, we have the Hollow Knight mod data pack by Sonic Rush X12. It allows you to play as the Knight with most of the character's abilities, which is pretty cool. In order to unlock it, you have to touch the bottom of the world, which gives you Void Essence. And you can craft it by tossing it onto the ground with a Nether Star, 64 Quartz, and 12 Leather. It'll give you an equipable item which turns you into the Knight. I used a different skin that I'd found, however, because it's adorable. Once you equip the knight helmet, you gain a soul meter, which increases when hitting enemies. 
You can use spell by equipping the soul item and casting it while aiming forward, up, or down. Or you can crouch to focus. To great slash, you also crouch, which feels a little bit awkward. Pogoing is another mechanic, but typically this results in accidentally launching yourself into the ceiling any time you hit an enemy underneath you. The data pack also has double jump and dash, which are definitely the most enjoyable parts. It's a neat mod overall, and the buffs it provides are balanced out by the crafting requirements. At number 7, we have the Don't Starve Together Night mod. This mod by Dirt737 and Wuda allows you to play as the knight. You start the game with the old nail, which you can craft upgrades for as you progress through the game. The mod also adds a charm slot to your character, allowing you to equip one of seven craftable charms. The charms you can craft are Soul Catcher, Unbreakable Heart, Fallen Fury, Hive Blood, Thorns of Agony, Sprint Master, and Glowworm. The character also has a passive speed bonus and gains sanity whenever you hit an enemy. The mod seems cool, but honestly, I've completely forgotten how to play Don't Starve. When testing the mod out, I died to the nighttime darkness because I forgot to craft a light source, so I'm probably not the best person to evaluate how good of a mod this is. At number 6, we have Enter the Gungeon's Hollow Knight character mod, and this is, in my opinion, where the mods start getting really good. This mod is really well made, it grants four starting items, the Nail, Void Heart, Shade Cloak, and the Soul Vessel. Dealing damage to enemies grants you soul, which you can spend to cast Vengeful Spirit. The Nail is the starting weapon, and by default doesn't destroy projectiles or have any range, so it's definitely a bit on the weak side. But in the config file, it can be adjusted to have different properties, such as destroying projectiles, which might be a bit overpowered, but also might be a bit more balanced than default. Shade Cloak is an item which increases the speed and distance of your dodge roll, which is a nice buff. Void Heart adds two heart containers, but doubles all damage taken, also causing half hearts to heal for full hearts instead. It's like being overcharmed as a drawback for the other starting items being fairly strong. There are even synergies coded with vanilla Gungeon items, but I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. Overall, it's a fun and well-made character. The double damage was a bit too punishing for me not having played in years, but I think most Gungeon players would find it okay. At number 5, we have Inscription's Hollow Nest Expansion. Inscription is an awesome game, and there's only one way to make it more awesome, which is by adding Hollow Knight cards to the game. The mod adds dozens of cards based upon Hollow Knight characters, many of which have their own unique mechanics to imitate the character's behaviors. One of my favorites was the Vessel question mark card, which as soon as it gets hit, becomes Nosk a character with a couple unique traits of its own. Dung Defender also makes an appearance using the game's stink mechanic to reduce the damage opposing enemies deal. The mod adds a lot of cards, and much like with Inscription's base game, I think you'll enjoy it more discovering them on your own, so I'll leave it at that. My only issue was that this currently adds onto the vanilla deck, rather than replacing it completely. I don't know if that's an option with Inscription mods or not, because I've never used other Inscription mods. But the cards themselves were super cool, and the mod is still actively seeing development. I had a lot of fun giving it a shot, so big shoutouts to Blind the Bound Demon for developing the mod. At number 4, we have Geometry Dash's Hollow Nest Level. This is more of a map than a mod, but I thought it deserved a place on the list regardless. This was created by Mr. Finland, and I'll just say right off the bat, it's really cool. Personally, I've always thought Geometry Dash was kind of a boring game, but this forced me to reconsider just a little bit. Mr. Finland recreated several of the areas in Hollow Knight really well in this map, including many of the game's enemies. You wouldn't expect a Geometry Dash level to look as polished as this is, but it's clear that a lot of effort went into making this. The coolest part of the map is definitely the boss battle against Radiance, which includes several of her attacks. It's just amazing stuff. 
I also like that the map looks crazy difficult, but thanks a lot to Mr. Finland for allowing me to use his footage. I don't have much else to say, this is just super cool and kind of speaks for itself. At number 3 we have Slay the Spire's Acts of Hollow Nest and the Bug Knight. So Slay the Spire surprisingly has two Hollow Knight themed mods, both created by the same person. One's a character, the Bug Knight, which includes a full deck of cards and relics, and the other is Acts of Hollow Nest, which adds areas, events, and enemies from the game. There's a lot of content here, although it does feel a bit rough around the edges. The Knight's starting relic grants you soul whenever you hit an enemy. Cards for the Knight's deck have several archetypes. Void, Infection, Dash, Spell, Ally, and possibly more. Some have huge drawbacks. For instance, using any Infection card gives you the Infection debuff, which is essentially just poisoning yourself. Using any Void cards gives you a debuff making you take 33% more damage. Often, I'm not sure the power of these cards warrant such huge drawbacks. Some of the text also doesn't fit too well, which you might have guessed from it being called the Bug Knight, but actually this only adds to the experience. My favorite part of the game were the Zod events, where you get a choice between fighting enemies for no reward, getting cursed, or letting Zod rob your money. There's also an event which gives you the Dream Nail Relic, which I collected at the very beginning of the game. He did nothing the entire game up until the final act, at which point I was given the choice of collecting some nice freebies or using the Dream Nail on an NPC. So of course I chose to use the Dream Nail. It ended the event instantly, giving me nothing. So yeah, thanks game. When I played, I used a dash deck. Whenever I cast a spell, Shape of On let me draw a dash card, and I picked up the King Soul Relic, which let me start each turn with enough soul to cast whatever spells I wanted. This ended up being a pretty nice combo. It wasn't long before I made it to the Hollow Knight, at which point I spammed dash cards to become completely untouchable. In conclusion, don't go into these mods expecting a super polished experience, but I do highly recommend them just because of the curveballs they constantly throw at you. It is a really fun way to spend a few hours. At number 2 we have the Knight, Hornet, and City of Tears mods for Rivals of Aether. There's been so much clamor for the Knight in Smash Bros Ultimate, but this game, much like Smash Bros Melee, already has all the Hollow Knight content you could dream of. These mods are also really well made, both in terms of artwork and the mechanics of the characters. Let's start by looking at the Knight. The Knight has numerous skins, colorizing the character based upon Grimm, the Pale King, Hornet, Quirrell, and more. Its taunt is pulling out a bench and sitting on it, which is amazing. Some of its specials are improved to upgraded versions if you have enough soul, which you get by hitting enemies. The specials you can use are Vengeful Spirit, Sharp Shadow Shade Cloak, Monarch Wings, and Dive. Its smash attacks are Great Slash, Cyclone Slash, and Wraiths. Most of its basic attacks just use its nail, but some use the character's cloak instead. I'm no expert at rivals, so I can't speak to this character's balance, but I love the design. It pretty strictly uses attacks, abilities, and mechanics from the game, yet despite rivals being such a completely different genre of game, it just works. Hornet, on the other hand, is a bit different. Hornet feels a bit more like a generic fighter that borrows just a few ideas from the game. Hornet is extremely fast. If Silksong Hornet is this fast, the any% percent speedrun will be over in 5 minutes. Hornet has a move which grapples to the ceiling, which is really fun, and her side special allows her to grapple and pull in her opponent. It's more Scorpion from Mortal Kombat than Hornet, but you know, it's still pretty cool. Her dash attack also pushes her into the air, meaning you can immediately follow up with an aerial, which is just... I don't know about that one, but everything else about her is alright in my opinion. Overall, if you're a fan of Smash, I do recommend giving these characters a try, although I did enjoy the Night Mod a bit more than Hornet, personally. 
Did you know that Hollow Knight has its own fan-made card game based upon Isaac Four Souls? Now you do, and it's awesome. You might have learned that Four Souls has a couple of official Hollow Knight cards, but one fan took the base rules of the card game and designed a full set of 178 playable cards, each with their own unique mechanics based upon Hollow Knight, and then threw it all in Tabletop Simulator for people to play. Now, to understand the mod, I'll briefly explain the original game. Isaac Four Souls is a competitive card game based upon the Binding of Isaac. Everything in the game is a card. Your items, your characters, your loot, and the monster enemies. The focus of the game is the combat. To fight, you select a monster and roll the die. If it equals or surpasses the monster's to hit value, you hit for your damage value. Otherwise, the monster hits for its damage value. To oh god, so I lose art. Each player takes their turn, collecting loot cards which have various effects, purchasing items from the shop, and fighting monsters until one player defeats enough enemies to gain four souls, winning the game. In Four Vessels, the modded version of the game, you can choose to play as the Pale King, the Hollow Knight, Hornet, or the Vessel, each with their own unique starting item. The way the creator of the mod fits the mechanics of Hollow Knight into the mechanics of Four Souls is done so well. I don't want to spoil everything because I do highly recommend trying the mod out for yourself, but I'll give you some examples of card designs that I thought were really cool. Almost every single Hollow Knight boss or enemy has its own monster card with unique mechanics. For example, Markov is an enemy that, to imitate the mechanics of the boss's random Dream Shield movement, forces the player to your left to predict a number. If you roll that number, your attack fails. Another fun one is the Collector, and when the Collector is drawn, all players have to surrender a loot card. Whoever defeats the Collector gets to take all of the Collector's spoils. Another fun enemy is Sot's Curse, who disables all the item cards that the player starts with and exists on the timer of automatically leaving the game when the next monster card dies. Equipment includes most charms and abilities from the game. You can collect spells like Descending Dark, which you can activate for invincibility frames, or charms like Unbreakable Strength, which boosts your character's damage by one. Loot cards include relics which you can sell for Geo, Mask Shards to prevent a damage, or Soul Vessels to deal a damage, usually to another player who won't be too happy about it. You can also use Rancid Eggs to negate the death penalty, Shopkeeper's Key to expand inventory slots of the shop by one, and the list goes on. Overall, the sheer amount of effort which went into designing these cards, from the artwork to the fun and unique game mechanics, makes this hands down the best Hollow Knight mod I've seen in another game. Isaac Four Souls is a really cool game on its own that's worth trying out, but making it Hollow Knight themed just makes it that much better. And no, I don't have a problem. Okay, now it's time for honorable mentions. First, I'm going to talk about rhythm games. Of course, there's plenty of rhythm games featuring Hollow Knight music. I think this is something most people expect or know about, especially given that I've already posted some of them on my channel. I found out there was a Friday Night Funkin' mod called Versus Hornet, so I finally gave the game a shot. From the videos of Friday Night Funkin' that I've seen, I've always thought it was some crazy rhythm game where you play both sides of the screen at once, but actually you only play one side, while the other side is played by an NPC. And I don't find the concept of watching an NPC autoplay a track very appealing, even though it is kind of cute to see Hornet rapping at me. If I ever get the hankering to play an arrow key rhythm game, I'll just play Step Mania. That said, the mod does seem to be well made, it's just not my thing personally. There is, however, one honorable mention which transcends the list, and that's Roblox. Through the power of child labor and suing YouTubers, Roblox has become the greatest video game in human history. It's so good that I don't even feel worthy of playing it, so I'll highlight a few videos instead. 
First is a script showcase. Now, going into this video, I had no idea what a script even was. I expected it to be an innocent mod allowing players to peacefully befriend others as the knight in Roblox. In reality, it's a hack that lets you murder unsuspecting players using the knight's abilities, which according to the person showcasing the mod are known as the Lance and Shadow Soul. So the entire video is just this person absolutely devastating some unsuspecting kids and probably getting banned from each server that they join. Now, let's not forget everyone's favorite Roblox game, Robloxian High School, for which a Roblox player has kindly constructed a tutorial showing us how to become the knight using the game's character generator. <laughs> Perfect running animation. <laughs> Lastly, there's RP Beyond Hollowness, which actually kind of surprised me. I think it's just a role-playing game, but it has some collectibles around the map and all kinds of locations from the game. You can even play a lot of different characters, including the mushrooms from Fungal Wastes, it even has Radiant Grubs. Just like in Hollow Knight itself, modders from so many other gaming communities are putting out unique and fun mods for people to try. I just want to give a huge shout out to these modders for all of their hard work. If you want to give any of these mods a try, just go down into the description. I'll have links to all of them below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.